Is that you, Maria? Yes, Papa. It's half past six. I told you to be home at... What's he doing in this house? Papa, Duke's got a job. In California. We're going to be married. When I'm in my grave, you'll marry a jailbird. He's been in jail, and she'll be in jail again. Wait a minute, Mr. Richter. Silence. The word of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Get out of my house. No. What kind of a triumph did you raise for a daughter? She chases after dirt like this. You. You shut your filthy mouth about Maria. Papa, don't. The evil bow down before the good. I'll kill you for that. Oh, no, don't. Please. Please, I'll meet you later. I was in no hurry to get to the office. Miss Brent had left to get married, and I'd talked Dad's old secretary into coming out of retirement to take her place, Catherine C. Halloran. Casey. Who knew more about law than most lawyers, but who refused to believe that I'd ever grown up. Lee, just a moment. This calls for a deposition. Have Mr. Clay arrange for it. Be peasants, he can take care of this too. And leave this on Mr. Maris' desk. Thank you very much. That'll be all for now. Fred, I'll be with you in a few minutes. Casey, my one and only love. Good morning, Mr. Maris. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Come on, come on, back to work. Shh. Herbert, what are you doing? We're alone now. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I'm glad to see you too, Herbert. Uh, okay, but really, you must stop being so demonstrative. Look at your tie. You should get married, young man. Casey, you've got to stop treating me as though I were 10 years old. Then you've got to stop acting as though you were. Okay, I give up. Let's start showing you the way we do things around here. Now, uh, what happened to my files? They've been distributed. They've been what? Your junior partners and law clerks are working on them. Casey. When will you learn that you can't do everything by yourself? And how will they learn if you don't let them? Now, what am I supposed to be doing while they're learning? Have you seen the morning paper? Some hoodlum stabbed a man with a knife. Allegedly stabbed. Have you forgotten your basic law already? All right, allegedly stabbed. So why make a federal case out of it? I know the boy. Herbert, the settlement house your father started. I've been spending most of my time there. I know Timothy. He's a good boy. Why, the, the younger children worship him. He even, well, he made me swear I wouldn't tell anyone, but he even played Santa Claus for them this Christmas. Casey, the nicest guy I ever met, poisoned three wives and was working on his fourth when they caught him. Very funny. Of course, he never played Santa Claus. Herbert, this boy needs help. That's why this desk is so clean. Casey, I can't. I'm just too busy. Herbert. Oh, be reasonable. We're swamped. 
I've been working 18 and 20 hours a day. That's why I need you here. I just don't have time for this. I see. I just didn't realize how hectic it was. Thanks, Casey. I'm an old woman, Herbert. And I don't think I can stand this pace. So I'll just clear up a few things around here and leave. You don't have to pay me for today. That's blackmail. Watch your tongue, young man. All right, Casey, I'll look into it. But I'm warning you, this is the last time you ever con me into anything. Very well, Herbert. What did you charge this man with? Baratry. Baratry? Yes, sir. Well, uh, you know what that means? Yes, sir. It's when a man deserts his ship or maybe sinks it on purpose. That's Baratry. Mm -hmm. uh, where did this happen? Main Street, corner of 10th. You mean to tell me a man sank a ship on the corner of Main Street and 10th? No, sir. He was pulling a boat on a trailer and he couldn't get around the corner. So he just pushed it over to one side and left it. Oh, come now, Danny. What? Why didn't you give him a ticket for obstructing traffic? I couldn't, sir. He wasn't obstructing traffic. Danny boy, I want to congratulate you. Because you're the first man in the history of the department ever to come up with a charge like this. Thank you, sir. <laughs> That's all. Good morning, huh? Good morning, Lieutenant. Would you believe it if I told you that officer arrested a man for committing barratry on Main Street? No. I didn't think you would. <laughs> what can I do for you? I'd like to talk to you about Duke Joyce. Now, just a minute, huh? I've checked it out and it all fits tight. Look, I've stuck my neck out with you time and again. I've had to shove back a few times, too. I'm, I'm not saying we haven't done some good, but no thanks on Duke Joyce. The evidence is all there. The DA feels you'll get an indictment, period. You got time for a story? No. It happened 20 years ago to a rookie patrolman fresh out of the academy. He picked up a man for murder. The evidence was enough for a jury to convict. The man was executed. Just a minute, Herb. You're talking about two different cases. Three years later, the rookie was a detective. He walked into a building alone to pick up an armed gunman. Though fatally wounded, the gunman confessed to the killing for which an innocent man had been executed. The detective was no way responsible, but it affected his every move for 20 years. He'd rather quit his job than believe an innocent man might be convicted if he could do something about it. Then worse, this detective met a lawyer. All right, now, wait a minute. This sir. lawyer had something in his craw, too. The feeling that while thousands of dollars were being spent to convict people, not very much money was being spent to prove them innocent. So, the two of them started to work together. They spent long hours on cases, and there was never a buck in it. Any sticking out of necks, wasted shoe leather, or sweat was a cheap price to pay for their inner satisfaction. Let's go. Maris. Uh, how's Annabelle, by the way? Well, she was picked up again for shoplifting. Oh, no. Yeah, I tell her, Annabelle, you gotta knock it off. What are the neighbors gonna say? Cops keep coming around all the time. She won't listen? But Annabelle is kind of like a sickness. And the thing she picks up, what do you think they nailed her for this time? Well, uh, knowing Annabelle Champ, I wouldn't even try to guess. Lawnmower. Oh, that I can't believe. And we live in a furnished apartment. Well, Lieutenant, I'll see you around. You bet. He's a good boy, then. Hi, Lieutenant. Oh, hi, Joe. How you been? Okay. Meet her in Paris. Joe. Hi. What brings you down here? Ah, uh, well, we'd like to ask you a few questions about Carl Richter. What can I tell you? He was a great guy. I liked him. 
Good customer. Not unless you understand. Quiet felon, went to church every Sunday, took good care of his family, had a nice daughter and a great wife. Ask Champ about him. He thinks they're the end. What about Duke Joyce? Yeah. Him I know, too. And I ain't crying when they strap him in that chair. How come? Oh, he's just a punk, him and his crowd. When I think of a little rat like that, killing a man like Carl, I don't know. All right, Joe, thanks. Any time. Just make sure they don't turn him loose, huh? Satisfied, huh? Uh, forgive me, gentlemen. Allow me to introduce myself. Professor Caldwell, I heard you discussing Timothy Joyce, and I'd like to add what little I know of him. If you're going to tell us what a bad boy he is, Professor. There was a great writer said once, farewell remorse, all good to me is lost, even be thou my good. Uh, John Milton, Paradise Lost. Ah, that's a man of intelligence. Omnia de que don't, a sola permanet. Uh, <clears throat> what is it you want to say, Professor? Well, just this. The boy is not as black as he's been painted. Can you be more specific, Professor? Well, you see, there are times when I've been... I think the expression is rolled for the few pennies that I might be carrying. But Timothy would never stoop to that. In fact, there was nights when it was late, and he walked me home to protect me. Well, gentlemen, I hope I've done the poor fellow a favor. Well, let's put it this way, Professor. You haven't done him any harm. I can no other answer make, but thanks, and thanks, and ever thanks. Shakespeare, Twelfth Night. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you. And thank you, Lieutenant. You surprise me sometimes, Lieutenant. Oh, really? Well, I don't eat peas with my knife, either. You know, I didn't think you did. <laughs> How about the professor? Oh, he's a fine character witness. Just what you need, Herb. You get him on the stand, and the DA will have a field day. Yeah. Well, where to now? You want more? Well, let's try Nick's place. He knows everybody in the neighborhood. You seem to be pretty well acquainted here yourself. Well, I should be. I walked this beat long enough. Hey, Nick! Hey, Weston! How are you? It's good to see you. I'd like you to meet Herb Maris. Oh, please, let me meet you. Nice to see you, Nick. What are you doing around here? Oh, we'd like to ask you some questions about Carl Richter. Yeah, terrible thing, ain't it? What do you want to know? Hey, lady! Don't pinch the tomatoes! <laughs> nice spot it out, Richter. Always paid cash. Real religious, too. You know, I bet he remember the Bible by heart. Hey, lady, I told you, don't pinch the tomatoes. I lose more tomatoes that way. What about Duke Joyce? You know him? Sure, I know him. Him and his brother Rats. How about that? Well, I figured they'd kill somebody one of these days. Oh, no. Wait a minute. You know, uh, that Nick's quite a guy. Well! Oh! <laughs> What are you going to do with these women? I tell them, and I tell them, don't pinch the tomato. Well, Nick, it looks like you got your problems, but thanks a lot for everything. Okay. Well. Hey, Weston, what's the matter? You lose your touch? Lieutenant. Thanks. Call just came through. They want you back at headquarters. At Duke Joyce, grand jury just indicted him for murder. Good, thanks a lot. Well, you coming home? No, thanks. I uh, think I'll stay here and look around a little bit. Weston was right. There was nothing more I could do to help Duke. Better take a cab back to the office. He was probably guilty anyway. And even Casey ought to be satisfied now. Too bad. At her age, she's going to have to find out there's no Santa Claus. Mr. Maris? Yeah? You heard Maris? That's right. I understand you're asking questions about Duke. I'd sort of like to put in my two cents worth. Sure. Can we go in here to Joe's? Go. 
What can I do for you? Would you like something? No, thank you. We just want to talk for a minute, Joe, okay? Okay. I uh, don't know your name. Jeannie. Jeannie Lucas. Didn't anybody tell you about me? No. Duke's a real good guy. We sort of went together before he met Maria. Once he met her, that was it. Real love. I told Duke, I told him a hundred times, get married and get out of this trap. Why didn't he? Maria. She wouldn't leave her mother alone. What do you mean alone? Mr. Richter was there. That's just what I mean. Look, I know Duke didn't kill him, but as far as I'm concerned, whoever did deserves a medal. Are you talking about Carl Richter? Nobody else but. Jeannie, you're the first person I've met who's had anything bad to say about him. Figures. He had them all conned. You want to hear something? Anybody else was around, Richter wouldn't even talk to me. But he was always managing to touch me by accident and let him catch me alone. Have you told anyone else about this, about the way Richter treated you? <laughs> no. I told the champ, but just for laughs. We always... Uh-uh. You're way out. The champ wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, maybe not ordinarily, but you said you were friends. No. Why not? He just wouldn't, that's all. I believe you're right, Jeannie. I don't get mad. I, I, I'm just trying to help Duke. Yeah. I guess I better be going. You know, you're a pretty nice guy yourself, Mr. Maris. Maybe... No, I don't suppose... Hi, Mr. Maris. Hello, champ. Sit down. I could use a little break. I seen you talking to Jeannie. She's a good kid. And Duke? Duke's a good kid, too. And I know where you can get some arguments on that, champ. Duke didn't have to make fun of nobody. Like me, for instance. I'm not a champ. They just talk like that, you know, kidding-like. I've been fighting a long time. Maybe you've seen me. I've seen you, champ. You were one of my favorites. Some of the guys around here treat Jeannie pretty rough. But Duke, he always talked to her like she was a lady. Not like Mr. Richter, hmm? Richter, Richter was a funny guy. You know, he wouldn't even talk to Jeannie when somebody could see him. Or like when he called me punchy. It wasn't funny, it wasn't friendly. It was Kind of mean, like he meant it. I don't like men should hit women. He hit Jeannie? No. No, he wouldn't hit Jeannie. Jeannie'd kill him. I mean, Mrs. Richter. Did you actually see Mr. Richter hit his wife? Yeah, once. But when he seen me, he uh, kind of made out like it was a, a joke, like he was kidding. Only he wasn't. Did you do anything about it? Well, I was going to. It. Mrs. Richter acted like she was ashamed when she seen me, and I figured I'd better go on about my business. But for sure, he wasn't kidding. I see. Well, thanks, champ. Well, I, I guess I'd better get back to work, too. It looked like I'd had it. I'd learned some things about Duke and Carl Richter that the police didn't know. But my only suspect was the champ. I didn't have enough evidence to hold him for five minutes. The only place I hadn't been was the scene of the crime. And I wanted to meet Maria and Mrs. Richter before I called it a day. Mrs. Richter, I'm going to have to ask you a very personal question. Is it true that your husband used to beat you? He's only trying to help Duke, Mama. It's true, Mr. Maris. I was pretty free with his hands. You should see the bruises she's got. Why did you stand for it, Mrs. Richter? Why didn't you try and do something? But what is there to do? Carl was my husband. It was his right. No, it wasn't. He had no such right. Oh, uh, excuse me, my baby. I must... Is that strudel I smell? You, you like strudel? Oh, I love it. Oh. Well, maybe you you 
Likes to taste it? Mrs. Richter, I'm not leaving here till I do taste it. Mama? Don't talk when I catch the riddle. Makes me nervous. Oh, this looks as wonderful as it smells. Uh, excuse, please. I take this to Mrs. Schwartz. I, I promise her. Is something the matter, Mr. Mara? Do me a favor, Maria. I want to talk to your mother privately. Would you leave us alone for 15 or 20 minutes? It may be important to Duke. I guess so. Thanks. Stepped out for a moment. Oh, then I, I get myself a piece of strudel, and I will make some. to say that that night he took his big belt he he wanted to beat up Maria to teach her a lesson he said I tried to stop him but but he knocked me down for me I do not care please mr. sir you you will not tell the, the police mrs. Richter do you think Maria would be happy with Duke? Yes. Yes, I think so. Duke has been indicted. He's going to be brought to trial. If they find him guilty, he can be executed for your husband's murder. No. Oh, no, that cannot be. But he's innocent. In this country, when a man is innocent, they set him free. But only you and I know he's innocent. But what will it do to Maria? If Duke dies, more important, what will it do to you? If an innocent boy is executed for a crime he didn't commit, how will you feel the night he dies? And all the other nights after that? Here you are, Casey. Thank you. To a very brave woman, and to someone else I know, a very stubborn one. Thank you. Well, to you, Counselor, for a job well done. Your father would have been very proud of you, Herbert. What happens to Mrs. Richter now? Oh, she'll be all right. Justifiable homicide, all she needs is a good lawyer. Oh, no. Not me. 